Some might be surprised to learn that the fate of America's economy has already been determined, verified, and announced by the Obama White House. Yet, it has received scant attention from the corporate media. In 2011, economist Kyle Bass interviewed a senior member of the Obama administration about its planned solutions for fixing the U.S. economy in trade deficit. Among the questions he asked was about the U.S. exports and wages, but the question itself was not nearly as important as the response he received from this senior administration official. In fact, this single seven-word response clarifies everything, explains everything, and leaves little else to discuss. We're just going to kill the dollar. There it is, the entire agenda in one short sentence. It explains everything we've been seeing domestically and globally. That one statement makes every other question irrelevant, or otherwise answers all economic questions and explains everything. Nothing else matters. I urge you to ponder that statement and all it implies. Doing so will provide you with the clarity to understand not only what is taking place today, but what is yet to come. It is important to note the specificity of the word kill. Stated in the active voice, it means an unambiguously intentional and deliberate act. The murder of our national currency, the United States dollar, is the ultimate agenda to be implemented under Obama. To kill our national currency will subvert the United States and destroy it from within. This begs a number of questions, including what type of Americans would actually have as their objective, the destruction of our national currency. To whom do they hold their allegiance, if not to the American people, whose life's work as well as the toil of our ancestors is represented in the form of wealth held in US dollars? Does this make any sense to us as Americans? The answer is, of course, no. By its very definition, to kill our national currency is an act of high treason by those engaged in this activity. It undermines the very sovereignty and survival of our nation and will have a life-changing impact on every citizen in the US. It will also impact every nation and the people of every nation on the planet, as the US dollar is presently the world's reserve currency. It is an act that should result in the filing of criminal charges against the conspirators a trial of their peers, and if convicted, a death sentence. It's that serious. According to my source, we are past the point of no return. We will not be able to stop what is coming, but must be wise enough to prepare and get out of the way. The murder plot involving the death of the dollar did not begin with Obama, but he and other conspirators have accelerated the plans, plots, and schemes for its demise. The ultimate objective is to implement an international currency in tandem with a system of global governance. The problem is that most people are not thinking large enough, nor do they understand the magnitude of the lie. They are not seeing the larger picture as their focus is diverted elsewhere. For example, they focus on various tentacles of the octopus such as the gun confiscation initiative the DHS armament acquisitions and economic woes as independent and unrelated events. They are not. Meanwhile, others continue to adhere to or even perpetuate the dual party meme of governance, holding dearly to the notion that there is a practical difference between the Republican and Democratic parties. Have we not seen sufficient evidence that they are now of one party acting in concert with each other? They cannot see the collusion and backroom deals and continue to hope that the next election will finally change the unchangeable continuity of agenda. Most of the elected officials are on board with the subjugation of the United States to a global system of governance. Some are actively facilitating this agenda, while others are making nominal objections on the stage of political theater, whilst hoping to earn a seat at the global table. It's entertainment for the globalists, distraction of the masses, and diversionary fodder for the talking heads in the media. America has become a captured operation, captured from within. 
Think of the Vichy French internal collaboration with the enemy, or softening the ground for a full takeover from within. The takeover of America has already happened. The collaborators have already been installed, and we are now on a path to complete subjugation of a larger global system of governance. If you continue to doubt this, how else would you explain the numerous examples of our dual party governmental acquiescence of self-destruction? Those who are pleased about the new record-setting stock market highs and various other manipulated statistics that indicate our economy is improving will be the most vocal critics of this report and who will attempt to discredit the validity of the information offered here. The more intellectually astute will look beyond the statistics offered for mass consumption not only to identify the deliberately manipulated data, but to understand what is actually driving these false hopes, figures and data. It is a magic show, and many are still captivated by the magician's many diversions, failing to realize that we are engaged in a global war, while being simultaneously hobbled by enemy infiltrators from within. One reason we are seeing new stock market highs is the rush to the dollar from other currencies, especially in the Eurozone. Another reason is the monetization of our debt by the Federal Reserve, despite the previous denials of Ben Bernanke and others. Simply put, the plan by the globalists or the central bankers and those behind them is to create this rush to the US dollar like passengers from a sinking ship to lifeboats. Once the lifeboats are filled to capacity, they will be sunk, and the United States dollar will be completely worthless. As in such a scenario, many will not make it. Many will die from what is coming. The level of evil behind this plan is incomprehensible to the normal human mind. We are at war with Russia. After removing Gaddafi from power in Libya, the Obama-Clinton Black Ops plan was immediately put into action. Benghazi was the logistics hub for arming the anti-Assad terrorists by our own State Department, covert operatives who were shipping millions of tons of weapons to Syria via Turkey and other staging areas. Russia was aware of our actions and through the attack at the CIA operations center in Benghazi by proxy forces, exposed this operation to the world while putting a stop to this operation. It seems that everyone except the Western media reported what had taken place. The dirty little secret, which explains why we have not been told the truth about Benghazi, is quite simple. The efforts to overthrow Assad from power are continuing, except the arms and munitions shipments are now originating primarily out of Croatia. Overthrowing Assad would pose a direct threat to Russia, both militarily and economically. Are we to expect Russia's Putin to simply accept this without response? No. What is Russia doing to subvert our efforts? He is waging war against America, striking at the weak underbelly of our economy, which is the oil-backed dollar as identified in Michael Reagan's article, Building on a Kernel of Truth. Sadly, the Obama regime is doing nothing to protect us from this asymmetrical war. It's as if they are allowing it to take place. Although it was reported in the New York Times, few have paid attention to last week's meeting between Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow. But it was an extremely important event in terms of the planned murder of the US dollar. An alliance is being forged between Russia and China to replace the US dollar as a reserve currency already severely weakened by the policies of those in power with a gold-backed currency. While reports do exist that cite the hoarding of gold by China and Russia, they are purposely under-reporting their collective reserves. Meanwhile, Americans can't even get honest answers to the amounts of our own gold reserves held in Fort Knox or the Federal Reserve. Don't people find this reluctance for audit and inspection a bit curious, if not outright suspicious? The battle is being waged not only by military might, but by a currency war. We are being played through our military involvement in the Middle East, including our covert operations against Syria at the behest of Saudi Arabia. Unlike Iraq, the war in Syria will explode, turn hot, and 
we will be engaged in an ominous battle that will quickly expand and turn deadly. Weaken militarily through the policies of the Obama regime, coupled with an already weakened economy, the US will suffer consequences unlike anyone might imagine or is willing to address. It is a recipe for disaster, planned and initiated by the global elite behind the central banking system, including those in our own government, who have been set up from within, lied to, and now. We're about to see exactly what this globalist system has in store for not only the United States, but every nation of the world. It is critical to understand that the takedown of the US will be the result of an asymmetrical war that includes the weakening of our military, our economy, and a direct assault on our ability to keep the dollar as the world reserve currency and protect the free flow of oil and energy to the United States. Within the last week, China held a surprise naval exercise in the South China Sea. Meanwhile, Russia displayed their resurgent military might in the Black Sea. These exercises were conducted as US military forces are spread thinly across many areas of the world. Is anyone paying attention here? Just as certain a collapse of the dollar is coming, so will be chaos on the streets of America caused by this plan to kill the dollar. The central bankers and the leaders selected to govern each country have effectively used the Hegelian dialectic to implement their agenda. Just as stated by George H. W. Bush on September 11, 1990, their predetermined solution of a new world order is being formed before our very eyes. They have told us what they are doing, but we have chosen not to listen or fail to understand what was being said. The US has always been the firewall against the globalists by their persistence, infiltration of global elitists into our government and covert subversion from within, we are being led to slaughter. A view from space, looking at the larger picture of events for which many have questions, a clearer picture emerges. There will be some who dare to resist the pillaging of our bank accounts, the erosion of our rights and the enslavement that comes with the dismantling of America. The dust clouds visible on the far horizon that watchmen have been reporting for decades can now be seen as an attacking army of barbarians whose fighters are now on the ladders and cannons are breaching our empire's outer walls. Who knows how long the inner walls of our empire will survive the next wave of their coming attack. Perhaps Ernest Hemingway said it best in referencing John Donne from his novel of the same name. And therefore, never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. The question irrelevant, or otherwise answers all economic questions and explains everything. Nothing else matters. I urge you to ponder that statement and all it implies. Doing so will provide you with the clarity to un Among the questions he asked was about the US exports and wages, but the question itself was not nearly as important as the response he received from the senior administration official. In fact, this single seven-word response clarifies everything, explains everything. Some might be surprised to learn that the fate of America's economy has already been determined, verified, and announced by the Obama White House. Yet, it has received scant attention from the corporate media. In 2011, economist Kyle Bass interviewed a senior member of the Obama administration about its planned solutions for fixing the U.S. economy in trade deficit. Everything, and leaves little else to discuss. We're just going to kill the dollar. There it is, the entire agenda in one short sentence. It explains everything we've been seeing domestically and globally. That one statement makes every 